Hello guys and welcome to the channel. Uh, today we are looking into Go routines and Go channels. Uh, so I'm continuing to learn uh, Go language. And um, all this idea of um, CSP, which is communicating sequential process, is obviously not uh, unique to Go, uh, but probably Go is the most uh, famous implementation of that. Uh, and um, we'll write a bit of code, write a simple Go application that will use uh, channels and concurrent processes. And at the end, uh, we'll take a look into uh, um, the same uh, application written in Clojure. In Clojure, we have a core.async uh, library. So there is no support for Go, Go uh, routines and channels inside the language, but it was implemented as a library. Cool. Uh, so yeah, let's start. We're going to use this URL and if we call that, we see the response will be something like this. So basically we'll have uh, results, which is an array. And inside the array we have uh, a name and the URL of the individual item. And uh, the idea is we're going to take like a page of 100 elements and then for each of those uh, URLs will uh, spin a Go routine, uh, do the request, and then we'll have a single channel that will uh, receive uh, Pokemon weights, and we'll print as we receive new weights, we'll calculate the average, basically, um, as, we, as we receive the results. Uh, so cool, yeah. First of all, uh, we need to uh, do the call to this thing, uh, but as we're going to uh, decode JSON, we need to define some types. So let's say we have a um, Pokemon list and it is a struct and inside we'll have a result, results, yeah, results, and it will be a vector of a Pokemon um, item, let's say, Pokemon list item. And we need to uh, say that it is um, JSON, and in, in JSON it is named uh, results. Cool. And we need one more type, uh, type Pokemon list item struct. Here we go. And uh, if we just get this URL real quick. Uh, do a request. Yeah, it's quite a lot of information, but yeah, we basically want this weight field. Um, and let's say weight, it will be an int and it will be uh, JSON weight. All right, um, let's uh, just add an ID maybe as well, int as well, and it will be JSON, JSON ID. Cool, so now we're ready to do a request. Uh, so what we want is to use http.get, and uh, we can just pass our URL right there, like this. So it will be a response and error that I suggest we ignore for now. And cool. Uh, after that, uh, we need body and error as well. So it will be, I believe, io uh, read all. So it will be response dot body. Okay. So now we have uh, the body. What we want to do next is we want to use. Um, JSON on Marshall, and we want to um, pass body there uh, as a data, data array of bytes. So it will be body, and result will be our var, which will be um, Pokemon's Pokemon list, like this. And we passing it inside um, unmarshal function Pokemon's. Yep. And here we have, yeah. So this should work, I think. Uh, let's now print that. Print.
print line. And let's say we want uh, Pokemon's dot results, we want uh, first result, and we want wait. So now let's run it. Go run. Let's actually uh, start with a loop, and we can do Pokemon right here, and it will be in the range uh, of uh, Pokemon's dot result. And inside, ah, oh, yeah, you're right. It's not. Uh, there is no wait, right? Uh, so wait will be in um, in a different response. So I made a mistake. So here we'll just have a URL, and wait will be the result of a single Pokemon. So we need to copy this type, and let's call it just Pokemon, and we'll have wait and URL and ID. So we don't have ID right here, but we have URLs. So this is fine, uh, Pokemon item, let's call it. So now uh, inside this for loop, what we want to do is basically we want to create um, um, a go, go routine, like go funk and like this. And we'll pass uh, Pokemon item dot URL, and it will re receive URL. And here we'll do uh, FMT uh, print line. Um, let's say calling URL. A URL should be string. Yeah. So now let's run it. Let's see. Yeah. So we have some calls, as you can see, but it's just prints for now. So after that, let's create a new function uh, that will be func uh, get Pokemon wait. And it will take a URL string and return int for the weight. And here we want basically same thing as here, uh, but our URL will be just URL. And this will be Pokemon, Pokemon. And in return we do Pokemon dot weight. Cool. Um, so let's say we have wait right here, and we do get Pokemon wait, and we pass the URL. And now we can print that. T print line uh, wait. Let's see what what's what will happen. Yeah, actually nothing because. We just created go routines, uh, but our main function uh, just finishes, right? We are not waiting for uh, go, uh, go routines to finish. So to fix that, what we can do is to create a var uh, wait group, which will be sync dot wait group, like this. And um, here, Inside, before we do uh, creation of the goroutine, we do wait group add and we'd add one. So uh, this that basically works as a count that we can wait later. And once that's zero, we'll just finish our, um, our program. So here we can do um, go uh, func. And we do we will do something like uh, wait group uh, wait and 
inside our uh, goroutine, we now using this defer function, which basically basically means this statement that uh, goes after defer will be called when this function finishes, which is really handy. So here, uh, after we increase the counter, we want to decrease that in uh, inside goroutine on completion. So it will be wait group uh, dot done, and basically done is just doing add with uh, minus one. Cool. Um, and here at the end, uh, we will will need a wait a way to uh, wait for the results, and uh, in this case, we need a channel uh, to send data to. So what I suggest, we create a single uh, channel called weights, and it will be make uh, channel. It will take int, and let's say we want a buffered channel with uh, 10 elements. So here, uh, when we got a weight, we, we know now instead of printing it, we want just to uh, send it to weights channel. And I, think, I believe it's something like this. And after our, um, at the end, basically, we want to create a for loop. Uh, we will have a weight right here and it will be from range, and here we have wait, so you can pass a channel like this. So now wait is int, and I suggest we add a count right here, and uh, total weight, uh, both zeros, and right here we want to do count uh, plus plus, so we increment the count, then we add um, total weight uh, will be uh, with weight, right? And now we can do printing, so fmt a pa a print line, uh, let's say average, which will be um, total divided by count, right here, and let's say we also have uh, current, which will be just a weight, and let's say count as well. Um, count, count, got comma. Yeah, looks good. And the only thing that now is missing is we need to close the channel because this will wait. Uh, for a condition, uh, so the channel is closed, and we can do that with a defer right here. So inside this go routine, we're just waiting for for the uh, wait group. But once all finished, we can close the channel, and again with uh, defer, and we do uh, close waits like this. I think that should work, but let's give it a go and see what happens. Yep. Right, so as you can see, we're getting um, euros as we receive requests. Maybe if I increase the number of uh, in the limit to run a bit longer, let's give it a go. Yeah, so you see we, we are reaching uh, exactly this page size and we're finishing. Um, so let's go through that again and see what happens. So we're creating a wait group uh, to control when we want to finish our program. Then we have a channel, a single one, that receives uh, the weights for individual item uh, as we get the result from the API call. All API calls are done in parallel in um, uh, in different Gortins. Uh, this actually is a limitation here, but it's a simple application. In reality, you want to do some kind of uh, control how much parallel requests you uh, create. And the way to do that is to use something like semaphore. Then you, you can say something like you allow 10 
items to be uh, to be running in parallel, and then you uh, somewhere here you're trying to acquire some for. If it's uh, allowed, you spin the Gortin. On the completion, you release the semaphore. Um, and that's how you can control number of concurrent goroutines running. Uh, so here we're creating pa uh, parallel requests. Before we're doing that, we increase the weight group counter. On the completion, we do defer done, which decrease the, the counter. Uh, here at the end, just not to block the program, we do a new goroutine that will wait for the uh, for the group uh, weight group to uh, become zero, and after that's true, we closing the channels, and closing closing the channels will basically mean that this loop will exit, and here we're just looping through the messages from the channel and do our our math, um, yeah. So this is simple Go application. Uh, let's take a look into uh, some closure. So here we have um, the closure app. So the libraries, uh, I'm just using CLJ HTTP for HTTP calls, uh, chorusing for uh, Go channels and uh, Go routines and channels, and uh, Cheshire for JSON decoding. And the program looks like this. So we have main, we have the Pokemon list, we're doing the same call here to this URL. We're getting the uh, getting the result, we're getting body, we're decoding JSON, uh, we're getting results. So right here, we basically have the list of uh, items, URLs, and then we're uh, creating the channel again. Uh, so you, you see this API, A stands for chorusing. Uh, a slash channel will create uh, a channel. Again, 10 is buffer size. Uh, then we do uh, iterate over our items, and for each of those, we're creating a go, ch a go routine like this. Uh, this is like a lightweight thread, whatever. Uh, and then inside, we're doing the call. We're decoding JSON, we're getting the weight, and this is how you write. Uh, to a channel. So this is the channel name and this is the value that you want to send. Uh, and this single exclamation mark means that this is non-blocking and this could be used inside Go blocks. If you want to use and send to channel or read from channel inside a thread, you need to use a, a blocking variant of that, which includes two exclamation marks. So once we've done this, uh, we uh, in a loop. In a loop, we maintain count, total weight, and this weight is what we receive from the from our channel. Uh, we increment the count, we calculate the total weight, and then just do print printing of the average, etc. And here I was just like a bit lazy, and basically I said when we reach the count hundred, I'm just stopping this. Um, uh, loop and I'm allowing the application to finish. And just for demonstration purposes, let's try to run that. Takes a bit of time because we need to spin JVM, but it should start right now. Yeah, so I can see almost the same. And yeah, I think the, the code is, is pretty simple as well compared to Go. Cool. So that uh, was a quick uh, intro into Go channels and quick comparison between Go and Clojure and Chorusing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I definitely enjoy learning Go recently. Uh, for some reason, um, I haven't touched any language except Clojure for many years now, and I feel like uh, a bit refreshed when I'm learning. So this is pretty pretty exciting. Um, see you next video. Bye-bye.